Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a really cool functional equation. Why do I think it's very cool? Because it has two variables, x and y, so you have more freedom, you can kind of play with this, replace x and y with whatever value you want. By the way, let me tell you, f is defined from reals to reals, so you can use any real number you like, okay? So this problem was actually phrased a little differently, but I wanted to change it up a little bit because that would kind of give away something, which I'm not going to talk about until the very end. So stick around. So here's the function we have from reals to reals. So for any x or y, that is a real number. This is true. And we got to find an expression for f of x in terms of x. Okay, that's what me solving for f means in a functional equation. Functional equations are interesting because you're solving for a function, not a variable, which, you know, can have many solutions. And sometimes functional equations have no solutions. If you can find some inconsistency, which I actually kind of demonstrated in one of my recent videos, see if you can find it, because, anyways, check it out. You can see the comment section, you'll get a better idea. All right, so, how do we solve a problem like this? Well, functional equations don't have a clear-cut recipe like sometimes you don't even know what you're going to do. But starting with the domain is a good idea. X and Y are real numbers. So we have a lot of freedom, no fractions. X can be zero, negatives, positives, fractions, irrationals, anything, pretty much. As long as you don't go to the complex realm where you deal with non-real numbers, sometimes. So to be able to solve this problem, first of all, notice that there is some type of I don't know if I'm going to call it symmetry, but notice the uh, interchangeability of X and Y, right? If you replace X with Y and Y with X, what would you get? The same thing. Of course, F of X, Y is always F of X, Y. That shows some consistency, doesn't it? But anyways, we have really nice structure here. How do we solve it? Well, if you don't have any idea for a functional equation, and if you know some numbers in the domain, for example, 0 and 1, negative 1, you should use those. If you have no idea, replace x on y or x or y with zero because that'll give you almost all the time something to work with. So let's go ahead and replace x with zero. Why do we start with x? Doesn't matter. If x is zero, then we get f of zero times y, which is f of zero. And then on the right hand side, you gotta be very careful because if x is zero, I don't care what f of zero is, it's gonna be zero times something, and that's zero, so I don't need to worry about it. But Wait a minute, what does x equals 0 mean? It means y can be anything, like y is y. Make sense? And you're like, why? So it's free, and we're just going to write it like this, y times f of y. Now, does this kind of give you an idea? Probably. You know why? Because you can write f of y now as f of 0 divided by y, provided that y is not equal to 0 in this equation. Of course, you need to make assumptions. You don't want to make it undefined. But if f of 0 is a constant, right? It's the value at 0. So it's the output when x is 0. So we can call it c maybe. Is that equal to c? So now f of y becomes c over y. Uh-oh, this looks like a rational function. But if, you, if f is a rational function, then y can't be 0. x can't be 0, but you just replace x with 0. And you said it's from reals to reals. So this is not real. Trust me, it is so unreal that this can't be happening except for one scenario. You know what that is? Should I tell you that? Okay. It basically means that C has to be zero. Otherwise, you're gonna run into a contradiction. So if C is zero, then F of Y will be zero. Wait a minute, what is that supposed to mean? You just said X is zero, now F of Y is zero? Yes, as a consequence. But this also means that F of X is zero because Y is an arbitrary variable. As a dummy variable, you can replace it with x, right? So this just means that our function is identically zero. Like at every x value, at every real number, you get a zero. So it's something that's like gigantic domain, a tiny range or codomain, whatever. Everything is mapped to zero. Is this okay? Yes, this, uh, does, this just means, sorry, my tongue twist. Um, it just means that f is not one-to-one, -one, and that's okay. Nobody said it's one-to-one, -one, so this seems okay, right? But let's check it in different ways. 
don't just settle for this because what if you made a mistake, right? So how do we go about it? Well, first of all, if y is zero, I mean, if x is zero, sorry about that, you get y equals zero. So we basically got the following, right? y f of y is zero. Now, here's the thing. If y f of y is zero, x f of x should also be zero, right? I mean, so in the equation f of y, f of x, y equals, and you know how y that's implied, right? Because you can replace y with x. Now, in the original problem, we were given this. Always stick to the originals, okay? Because you're going to go back and forth, back and forth. So if this is zero and that is zero, what's that supposed to mean? This means that when we got, when x or y is zero, we got f of zero. f of zero is equal to zero. That makes sense? Okay. If f of zero is zero, what is that supposed to mean or how does that help, right? Well, here's the thing. Now, if f of x f of y f of y is zero and x f of x is zero, then we kind of get the following from here. This becomes two times f of zero, right? So what is that supposed to mean? It just means that f of x, because when x and y vary, x, y can basically be any value, right? So f of x becomes two times f of zero. For example, you can take y to be one in this case, right? But that just means that f of x is a constant. Uh-oh. And if f of x is a constant, and we know that f of zero is zero, so f of x will be a zero. Or you can just say, if f of x is a constant, and if f of zero is zero, the only constant f of x can be, must be zero, right? But you can also think of it this way. If f of x is a constant, let's just say f of x is k, okay? Then from the original equation, what was that? f of x, y equals x f of x plus y f of y, right? If f of x is equal to k, this will be a k, and then this will be a k, and this will be a k. So it'll be xk plus yk, all right? And then we can factor out a k here and write this as k times x plus y. And of course, this is only true either x if x plus y is one or k is zero. But of course, x plus y is not always one because x and y are arbitrary variables. This is not true for all x and y, for all x and for all y element of real numbers. This is false, so k equals zero must hold or must be satisfied, which means we assume, remember, f of x equals k and k is zero, so f of x is zero. Sometimes they'll write it like this with three lines, which means f of x is zero everywhere, which is identically zero. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you Next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI and cyber math. By the way, if you think back to the first method, that was totally correct and that was probably the best way to do it. Anyways, bye bye.